Hi, I'm That Guy, and welcome to another GameHeart review. Sigma Theory is a single-player turn-based strategy game. Players take control of a special research department and attempt to discover new scientific breakthroughs before your rivals do. But don't expect things to be done above board. These Sigma technologies are life-changing and will eventually lead to the singularity. As such, you're given a team of agents who will use guile and strength to steal scientists, dig up dirt on your rivals, and hack their computer systems to disrupt them as much as possible. When the fate of the world is at stake, no one is afraid to play dirty. When agents are performing actions, various factors are at play to determine whether they will be successful or not. Agents have their own stats and skills, meaning that each one is different, and some will be better at certain jobs than others. Not only this, but each nation that the agent is in has their own alert level, and higher alert levels make life very difficult for your agents. The two stats agents have are Strength and Intelligence. Intelligence is used for hacking, persuasion and reconnaissance, and Strength is used for capturing enemy agents, combat and acquiring weapons. In the build of the game that I played, intelligence does seem to be used far more than strength is, but it seems as though the developers are trying to make strength more viable in future updates. In Sigma Theory, the majority of the game has you planning moves on a world map screen. You'll send agents to other countries to have them locate, identify and convince their scientists to defect and then work to extract them. A lot of turn-based strategy games get more bloated towards the end of the game as you need to control an ever-growing army of units or work with an increasingly large amount of bases or buildings in order to win, but Sigma Theory keeps the scope of the game to your four agents right up until the very end. Some players might find this a little disappointing, but it ensures the pace of the game stays fast and fun right up until the very end. In addition to the four agents that you control, you also have two remote controlled drones that you can fly to specific nations in order to support your agents in their tasks. The surveillance drone helps agents with their reconnaissance missions and the combat drone can be used to put pressure on rival nations in diplomacy. At any point during a turn, you can request to contact a rival nation Sigma research head and book a meeting with them within the next week. Through trades and some sweet talking, you can attempt to use diplomacy in order to convince them to give you their research, scientists and more. If you want to get the upper hand in a meeting, you'll be sending your agents in to dig up dirt on them and installing ransomware on their computers. Then you'll go into the meeting with a friendly greeting and a smile to use the leverage you earn to extort them for your own gain. I found this gameplay loop of stabbing your rivals in the back while smiling to their face to be incredibly satisfying, and although the game is single player, and you're only playing against AI opponents, you get a great sense that you've outplayed them if you're able to pull everything together. When you start playing Sigma Theory for the first time, you'll have a limited selection of agents to choose from, but as you perform certain feats in the game, you'll unlock more to choose from for subsequent playthroughs. Although the actions can be done by any agent with varied success, it's nice that as you are figuring out what's important for your playstyle, you'll be unlocking agents that specialise in these skills and balance what you're missing. You'll probably also learn what skills you want to avoid. So far I've only spoken about the main world map management section of Sigma Theory, but there is one other main component to the gameplay. Exfiltration. Once you've convinced or kidnapped a scientist, you're ready to get them to your home country, and you'll need to begin an exfiltration. The camera zooms in to a citywide map, and you'll follow your agent as they reach their escape point. After every step of the journey, your agent will contact you and ask for advice on how to proceed in a given situation. It's up to you to take into account their stats and skills, as well as the risk of each choice, and then advise on how they should proceed. The agent will then proceed and the outcome of your choices are made known to you. If, for example, the agent tries to overpower a police officer to steal their car, you probably want them to have a lot of strength, and it wouldn't hurt if they were a martial arts expert too. Depending on the success of the action, these few things can change. The alertness level of the city can go up or down, the agent will travel a lot of distance or a short distance, and the agent can lose health. Ideally, we're looking for outcomes that lower the alert level and allow the agent to travel far without losing health. As the alert level rises, more security checkpoints will appear and the agent is more likely to get into full-blown combat more often. When an agent gets into combat, a screen will appear showing the options the agent has. These options are always to flee, neutralize, or eliminate your enemies. 
Each option shows you how risky the action will be, so it's up to you to determine how the agent should proceed. Generally speaking, eliminating the opposition will be the least risky as you can do it from afar if the agent has a gun, but this method is likely to cause a bit of collateral damage and can even cause civilian deaths, which your own bosses and the country you are exfiltrating from will be <coughs> uh, very angry about, to say the least. If your agent successfully makes it to the extraction point, they and the scientist will be on the next flight to wherever you call home. But if the agent falls outside of combat or in a non-elimination confrontation, they will be captured. At least this gives you something new to talk about with that country Sigma head. Hooray, friends! Now that you've got your new scientist friend home, they will automatically get to work in their related field. Each scientist has a specialty, and if assigned to that field, they will work faster than if they were working elsewhere. Similarly to games like Civilization, if your nation is the first to discover a particular breakthrough, you're given a benefit that can greatly push things in your favour. For example, a lot of the combat breakthroughs will enhance your agents to make them more proficient in exfiltrations, or mind control technologies will allow your agents to recruit scientists easier and even give you the edge in diplomatic meetings. Once you have 15 Sigma research points, you are able to start researching the Sigma project, and if you are the first to finish researching this, you win the game. If a rival nation is the first to research the Sigma project, you lose. There is also a doomsday clock which ticks ever closer to midnight the more the world is thrown into disarray by the ever-changing technologies that the Sigma research unleashes onto the world. If the clock hits midnight, full-blown nuclear war starts and the game ends immediately. As you can imagine, there are no winners. Uh, except for cockroaches, I guess. This extra loss condition can make choices you need to make interesting, because some technologies, if kept to yourself, can really give you an edge against your opposition. But the world is worse off for it, so you'll need to balance giving yourself an advantage with the good of the planet. I'm hoping that if you've gotten this far, I've not confused you by mentioning each of the individual parts you need to manage. Sigma Theory has a great tutorial that explains everything, and after an hour or so's play, you'll be giving orders like a pro. It really does help that basically everything except for your agents manage themselves. There are absolutely no bloated mechanics in the game. You don't need to manage the scientists unless you want to. You don't need to complete diplomatic meetings unless you want to. The only thing that you do need to do is send your agents on missions and occasionally deal with your nagging spouse. In Sigma, nothing. I, w I wasn't saying anything. Where was I? Oh yeah, that's right. In Sigma Theory, your character has a wife or husband and needs to manage their needs in addition to running a top-secret, world-altering organization tasked with stopping the destruction of the world. Now, it's not actually as silly as GTA 4. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. I mean, not as silly as I make it sound. Your spouse is also an international diplomat, and with both of your jobs being important on a global scale, every now and then your spouse will ask for assistance with a security detail or research task to help them with whatever yeah, it is that they, they do. I swear I was paying attention to them, but I have no idea what it is that they do. A am I a bad husband? Helping your spouse will usually have positive benefits such as improving relations with another nation, but in order to help you often need to give up a scientist or even an agent for a few days, so unless you're really in a good place progress wise, the sacrifice you need to make for them will be felt heavily. Moving along, there are three game modes in Sigma Theory, although most of them play exactly the same for the most part. In story mode, you're forced to play for the United States, with additional story objectives and story being woven into the core gameplay loop during certain points of the game. The extra story that story mode offers is nice, and it's probably the best way to make your first playthrough or so, but once you've experienced the two ways the story can go, it's safe to say that you won't really miss the extra events and would be more than happy to play classic mode. Classic mode plays the same as story mode, but without the extra story events. Classic mode also allows you to submit scores to the leaderboards and choose from any of the available nations to play. 
Each nation has their own special ability, but perhaps unfairly, only the USA has an ability that applies to all of your agents, whereas the rest of the nations gain an ability that slightly changes the way a single scientist or agent behaves. Custom mode allows you to change modifiers to make the game easier or harder as you see fit, in addition to allowing Steam Workshop content, such as custom agents or scientists, to be added to the game. All in all, Sigma Theory is a great game. I do have some small issues, but they're not ones that impact how fun the game is to play. Earlier on in the review, I mentioned that intelligence is used for most actions, and that the developers are looking to make strength more meaningful. The problem is that almost every action that is performed when looking for scientists or investigating an individual is done with intelligence. Even two of the three scientist persuasion techniques are done with an intelligence check, and the only action that does use strength can use intelligence depending on which stat is higher on the agent. Strength definitely has its uses when exfiltrating, especially when alert levels are high, but Sigma Theory rewards you for handling exfiltration stealthily, which in many cases seem to be intelligence checks. If you are forced to use lethal force in an exfiltration, the havoc you cause will make your own leadership and the nation you are exfiltrating from hate you. It makes the game more difficult to win and scrapping your chances of getting the good ending entirely. Again, you're welcome to play aggressively, but the majority of the good actions are completed with intelligence. Sigma Theory really shines as a fresh turn-based strategy game. A given turn only takes a couple of minutes, and each action that you take feels impactful. It has that classic one more turn gameplay that when you look down at the clock it's somehow 3am. So you better take one final turn and then head to bed at 5am? How did it get to 5 a.m.? I mean, it would. I. I. <sighs> the art style on all of the characters are particularly stand out, going for a sort of watercolor painted style that almost looks realistic. The UI is easy to understand, and the world and city maps are very easy on the eyes, too. Thanks to continually unlocking new agents, there's always something new to look forward to. Not only that, but if you do manage to win the game, there are three endings depending on your performance with a good, neutral, and bad ending. Even if you lose a game, you just want to get back in there and try again, and there's really nothing better I can say about Sigma Theory than that. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please like or share the video if you feel so inclined, or leave a comment and I'll get back to you.